Hello, welcome back. In the last chapter, we have developed our benchmark script and the benchmark script is looking like this and the name of the script is master script underscore v2 and notice that if I run this master script underscore v2 it does all such activities like browsing a book, attempting a quiz, submitting, submitting an assignment to participating on a discussion forum to updating a glossary all right so all these activities are done now remember that we are running using vu gen all right and then whenever we want to run say to 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 test that if the script is for running fine or not we are just going to here and then we are executing the script and when the scripts are executed what happens is that first the v user init function called and then the action method is called and then we have written our custom functions here so those things will be called in a random order all right so now the question is that how do i run 100 users same time so the the, the challenge here is that using vu gen we can just run only one user but the question is how to run 100 users simultaneously and that is what is our real life scenario is in the real life scenario we might might the, the server that we want to test we want to really load test with say 10,000 users okay so how to run 10,000 users simultaneously so here is an option the option is that you can you can start 10,000 of view gen program and then each time go manually and then click on this replay button that can be possible but that is not really a elegant way of doing these things okay so therefore the option one of starting 10,000 virtual user is not really going to work for us and let's see how can we make this thing work in another way so so the end of the day like as long as my C function as long as my C program is calling this function called action then all those things will be done like all these activities will be done by script Alright, by so all those activities will be done by calling different methods. Alright, so therefore, why don't you write some kind of a uh, like why don't you write a, a a a C program, okay? And that C program is going to take input as which script to run, right? So let's say this is this is called a script one. So which script to run, and then how many times it's going to run? Let's say it's going to run. 10,000 10 times so simplicity let's say it's going to run 10 times and then uh, then then let's try to develop that C program this is you can if you have worked on ever any multi-threaded program this can be this can be done using a multi-threaded C program the, the way I'm going to do it I'm going to start a thread say the thread is th1 and then this thread is going to start at time t is equal to 0 right and then I'll say that okay after I spawn this thread th1 then th1 is going to execute this function action and once this function got executed then action inside action we have written, written we have invoking other functions so at the end of the day we are going to do a lot of web underscore URL or web underscore submit which is going to actually going to submit or access uh, the, 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 the test website all right so this is after time like after this step is done say after time t is equal to 5 seconds I will spawn another thread th2 and then I will say run this action method okay and similarly I will start at t is equal to 50 seconds I will start th10 and thread, thread 10 is going to start action so right so if you write this C program and this program we're going to going to simulate 10 users and once this action is going to run we can put some kind of loop that okay you loop till you know loop for next 20 minutes okay but do not finish until you do the 10,000 iterations or, or whatever okay so those kind of things we can input as a parameter to this to this C program let's call this C program as command Let, let's like let, let's uh, so, uh, so, to, so we can input all these parameters to this C program and then this C program can essentially you know execute all these actions simultaneously all right and then notice that if I want to run 
10,000 of those threads, it may happen that if I run, if I'm running on a single, you know, say four CPU machine, then that machine may have bottleneck. Like after after say 50 threads, maybe we are going to consume all the CPU here in this machine because notice that each thread is now is going to do all this work. Okay, so therefore it may happen that we might uh, consume all those uh, CPU in one box. So in that case, what we can do, we can do take another approach that this is our C program which is spawning the thread and instead of spawning the thread on that same box, so let's say this is the machine and let's call this machine as host1. So instead of spawning the thread in this host1, let's ask it to spawn the thread on another machine, another remote machine. Let's say call this remote machine R1 and this remote machine R1 some kind of agent program so that this C program can communicate with this agent and then start spawning the thread T1, TH1, TH2 and so on. Let's say it is going to, going to, going to start 5 threads here. Okay, and then again the script that we have written here. So we're going to pass that script to this remote machine, and then this script is going to, you know, so this th1 is going to run with the script s1. Essentially, it's going to going to execute all those functions in that script. Okay. And similarly, we have another remote machine, let's say r2, and inside r2 we are going to we are going to start from thread six up to thread ten. Okay, and then this C program is going to connect to do this agent and run. So we can basically write all this program ourselves. Okay, we can write this agent. We can write this, you know, you know, in a C, in a C program, which is basically commanding, right? So these are kind of kind of slaves, and this is the master, or let's say this is the command center. Okay, so essentially we can do all these things in your any in, in your favorite language like C, Java, Python, or whatever. Uh, however, however, an enterprise tool like Load Runner will give you the functionalities in terms of a tool. Like instead of you writing the C program, rather you just concentrate on writing your your script, which is which is this is which is just unique to you but these things okay these generic things can be packaged as a tool and given to you and exactly that's what load runner does and this instead of command center center they call this c program as controller and then these are called load generators and this is called agent Okay, so essentially, if you see, look at the load runner architecture. So you have two more pieces right now: controller and agent. Okay, and then your script, which is always going to be developed using Vue Gen. So that we have already done. So that's the develop time. You develop the script. Once you develop the script, then open up your controller and then run how many number of times. And notice that this load run generator can be on your machine or this can be on a, on, 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 on a cloud provider. Like we'll show you in one of the video that how you can use the popular Amazon Web Services cloud to configure load generator and run the test. And the advantage of all this architecture is that it's extremely scalable. Okay. Like you know we can use maybe one million, we can simulate one million users. Just the thing is that we need to add one more load generator so so what just only the thing is that we need to add more load generators to generate loads so this is an introduction to controller and i hope you will you you will understand now why we need controller